We are gonna go give you guys a follow-up on a really special patient, Emmett, who you've seen before. We have life missions. We don't always understand what they are. Like I'm over 60 years old and I'm starting to understand some of mine. He already is fulfilling a life mission that we're becoming aware of. Yeah. And you're helping make that possible by informing everybody about newborn screening that's not expensive for something that's devastating, that's easily, not easily, but fairly easily treated mm -hmm. to prevent the progression. Yes. I mean, you can check out his previous videos in the description link below. I'm gonna rely on one of my superheroes. This this is a mom who has taken care of uh, Emmett, who, I'm gonna let you tell the story, okay. but what's so powerful about your story is that you're, you're doing this so that the world knows about Crab A, mm -hmm. and they can do something so that they don't have to live this scenario that you've had to live. Right, so Emmett was born into your practice, mm -hmm. and, um, we didn't have any idea that anything was wrong and he progressed normally for the first nine months of his life and then yeah. we noticed that he had some low muscle tone um, so we said let's keep an eye on him we're not going to do vaccines until we figure out what's wrong and which turned out to be a really good idea <laughs> and um, by the time he was a year old he wasn't pushing up into a sitting position and he wasn't crawling so he referred us up to one of the hospitals here to mm -hmm. see a neurologist um, and he still continued to gain skills for mm -hmm. the next six months. So till about 18 months. Till about 18 months. And then the first time he went under anesthesia, he lost a couple of words, which I didn't notice mm. at the time because he just gained them. So I was like, okay. I don't know, like what's going on here? And then the second time he went under anesthesia was when he was 18 months old and then he lost his ability to walk. So we were, he was walking around the house, holding our fingers, like doing laps and then uh, one day he like well one day like two or three days after he had gone under anesthesia he um, took two or three steps and then just collapsed and started screaming and I couldn't tell if it was because he was in pain or frustrated or just didn't want to walk I wasn't sure what was going on and his physical therapist was there actually that day and she said you need to call your neurologist right now that turned into quite a <laughs> quick progression mm -hmm. um, and a, di like a diagnostic odyssey, if you will. It took, right. from the time that he was nine months until we got a diagnosis, it was a year and three months huh. is how long it took. So it basically it was two. Yep, he was, yep. He was almost two when we got a diagnosis. Yep. And um, the diagnosis was? Crab A disease. Mm -hmm. um, so Crab A disease is a neurological disease that um, they the body doesn't produce an enzyme to get rid of toxins that come into nerve cells and so then the myelin sheath around the nerve cells die and the brain can't send signals to the body yeah basically is what it is demyelinating sort of yes it's yep. a demyelinating disease yep. it's a leukodystrophy yep so uh the real big push that you've helped the world with here is this understanding that crab a can now be treated yes because so newborn screening, you guys, is something you do when there's a disease that if you pick it up early, you can do something about it. And even though these are relatively rare conditions, when you can do something about it, um, why not? Right. Right? Yes. And you've got friends now who have Crab A kids who caught it early. Yeah. And what's what are they doing and what's the difference? Um, you mean for treatment? Yeah. So. For treatment, what they do is, if they catch it before symptoms start, they can do um, a core blood stem cell bone marrow transplant. Uh, no, just a transplant. Just a transplant. Yeah. Okay. No, no, bone, no marrow. bone marrow is required. But so they do, um, they do chemo for 14 days, and then they do the core blood transplant, and um, they can have a relatively normal life. Now, for our viewers, they might be wondering, would that be the cord blood of your own child or some other cord blood? It would be other cord blood, and that comes from donations. Mm -hmm. So it's free to donate at um, Be The Match. Gotcha. So if people are not planning on banking their own cord blood, they can donate it for free, which would save little children's lives. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. This is new information, you guys. Be the match .com. If you're having a baby and you're willing to donate that cord blood, you could 
save someone's life. Why not? It's a no-brainer. Thank you. Yeah. Another new thing. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Hey. Hey, buddy. Hi. I know. Everybody's got to get their diaper changed every once in a while, right? Huh? How well does he hear now? Um, he still hears fine. He it hears just, okay? It just takes a while. Okay. Takes a minute or two. There you go. Is that better? <laughs> Do you have any vision at this point, you think? I don't think so. No? Because one eye is off, right? So they're not working totally together at this point. Yeah, we were told that the um, demyelination is what causes the pupils to Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Hey. It's Dr. Paul, and that's Big Nono there. Yeah. You, you probably remember us. In general, he responds okay to touch. Yeah. He's got his feeding tube, yep. and so that's how he's feeding and sustaining himself because he can't coordinate swallow, obviously. So we want to obviously check for bowel sounds. He's got some bowel sounds. Check your heart. Yeah, you got a good sounding heart, buddy. Yeah. So what are the biggest challenges you're having at this point? Um, so the muscle stiffness is the biggest one. And then um, last Monday we were just at his orthopedist, I think. Uh -huh. And they took a, an x-ray of his hips and his left hip is Doctor's words, half in, half out. Oh, <laughs> so he's it. so. It's sort of dislocatable mm -hmm. at this yeah. point. Yep. Yeah, because he's so stiff all the time, I think it puts pressure on that joint. Right. Normally and you're better if you're in a flex position. Yeah. yeah. And he's not getting in his standard as often as he should, which, mm. so he doesn't have weight bearing, so like the curvature in the um, bone yeah. isn't there either. Uh, from, from, that he would have had. Yeah, so. So what have you got there? I've got his morning meds. Morning meds, <laughs> you wanna go ahead and give them and tell yeah. us what you're giving? That'll sure. be, uh, then I'll know what his morning meds are. <laughs> yeah. um, um, this is round three of morning meds. Round three. <laughs> you, you need an honorary doctorate, I think. <laughs> so this is Baclofen. Um, All right. It's the muscle relaxer. Okay, how often do you have to give that? This one's every four hours, is that four times a day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, every four hours? Or, no, it's every, every six hours. It's every six hours. Day, yeah. Yep, every six hours. And then that one? This one is the Zantac. All right, for his acidity in his stomach, just to decrease that some. Yep. Because yeah. he does have a lot of acid reflux. Yeah. So for folks who have reflux, if you decrease the acidity, at least it doesn't burn the esophagus, so that's good. Yeah. Now, what's that dark looking stuff? This one is Senna. Um, Senna. Okay, it's so a that's fiber? Yeah. Okay. Help him go to the bathroom. Gotcha. Yeah, when you're tube fed, it's you don't get the fiber you would from chewing vegetables and fruits, for example. Sorry. That's his food pump. Reminding me to turn it back on. <laughs> oh, it's time. Do you do continuous feeding through the day now? Yeah. Okay, because he was bolus fed at night before, wasn't he? Um, earlier, earlier on, yeah. On, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's on it basically like, this is a flush, yeah. yeah. So he's on it basically 20 hours a day now. So he gets like a four hour break in the morning. Gotcha. Gotcha. So this is your, your regular feeding tube. Yep. You're hooking him up and he's got a, a backpack with his food. He's got a backpack with food. Yeah, look at that. So in that backpack is a little, what do we have in there? So this is Nourish. Nourish, I love Nourish. Um, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's organic, non-GMO, whole yep. food. Yep. All that yep. good stuff. It's a very good product. Yep. And that's hooked up to a little machine it's down on the to bottom. A pump at the bottom here. He's getting yep. a rate of 53 mLs per Look an how hour. How tiny those are now. Those used to be humongous. Really? <laughs> now it's in a little tiny backpack. Yep. Now it's in a tiny backpack. Yeah. So this Absolutely. Is, um, David and Michael. Okay. Um, 
Michael has Carvey disease, but he was transplanted at four months old. So. I, it's nice to meet you. So your name? It's Michael. You're Michael? Wow. And how old are you? Uh, eight. You're eight years old? You go to school? Yes. Yeah? What grade are you in? Second. Second grade? How's school going? Boring. <laughs> Boring? <laughs> so he was diagnosed by newborn screening, probably? Don't know. His brother, Marshall, uh, <clears throat> so that's your brother. Mm -hmm. Is um, is uh, is Marshall living? No, he passed away three years ago. Three years ago. I'm sorry. So sorry to hear that. Because of that, you, how did you diagnose? So when Marshall was diagnosed, he was 18 months old. <clears throat> he was still a brand new baby, so we immediately tested him oh. because Marshall set the timeline on the disease which meant that all of our older kids would not have it, but our younger kids cool. after Marshall could uh, theoretically be diagnosed with it. Right. So as soon as Marshall was diagnosed, we immediately had him tested and he got diagnosed. Okay. So he was actually diagnosed at two months old. Okay. He was a uh, cord blood transplant at four months old. They actually found his cord blood uh, in a cord blood bank over in Utah. What However, is, what that, does that procedure entail? It's at the time it's, um, 10 days of chemo, mm. and okay. then um, at, right after that, then they get the uh, cord blood, which gotcha. is really, it's like, and the cord it's anticlimactic. Is, it's just an IV? Uh, it's an IV, but um, when they go in is to start warranty? everything, um, he gets a um, central line put in. Okay. And so they just did it through the central, through the central line. line. He got through it, and um, I mean, realistically, <coughs> You have no idea that he's ever had a disease yeah. of any kind. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, his chest has a lot of scars on it because of all the complications and everything. Gotcha. But um, other than that, I mean, we do annual uh, checks yeah. on everything, and he's doing fantastic. So, folks, uh, what we have here is a demonstration of the contrast between picking up crab ace early and treating it with a simple um, transplant from cord blood and not being able to pick it up early because we didn't have newborn screening. I wasn't even aware that there was newborn screening until you brought it to my attention. Hunter's Hope uh, is the organization that will send this kit to anybody mm -hmm. in the country. If your state has not yet started newborn screening, such as our state of Oregon has not, uh, you can go to huntershope.org, correct? Yes. And, and order. Yeah. Mm. All right. <laughs> Good. So, um, you know, this this is life-saving, life-changing, and, um, you know, for any parent, I just came out of a prenatal, and they were asking me, what else should I do? Should I bank my cord blood? And I said, well, if you can afford it, yes, but go to Hunter's Hope and get that kit so we can send that screening in yeah. because um, this is the difference. It's it's just, it's something we ought to do now. I mean, this is, um, this is not a difficult or expensive screening test. Right. Yeah. Thank you both Thank for you. sharing your journeys and uh, such bravery, mm -hmm. such Thank bravery, you. both of you. I mean, you've, you've both been through a lot, mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm just grateful that you're willing to share this with the world. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Information in the description for Hunter's Hope and, everything else. and past videos and everything else you might need. I'm Dr. Paul.